everybody, welcome back to Meet the Wilds. So today channel mum have asked me to talk a little about my TTC journey. For those of you who don't know, TTC means trying to conceive. But as I've already filmed a couple of videos about the IVF that I underwent to conceive my two sets of twins, I thought that I'd film something a little bit different but still related today and I would tell you how we chose our sperm donor. I'm sure you already know, if you follow my channel or my blog, Meet the Wilds, that I am one mum in a two-mum family and my partner Kirsty is a woman. So when we decided that we wanted to create a family, we realised pretty quickly that there was a spanner in the works and that was that neither of us produced sperm. So obviously that had to be sourced from somewhere. Single mothers by choice and two mom families like us have a couple of choices when it comes to acquiring um, sperm in order to conceive our babies. There are free websites on the internet where women can go to find a sperm donor and some women do that. They find um, men who are willing to donate sperm and they meet with those men and either conceive naturally, attempt to conceive naturally, or they ask the man to produce and provide some sperm and then they inseminate themselves. And actually we did that twice very early on in the process with the same perfectly nice guy before I thought it through and realised that actually having a baby was not worth the indignity of inseminating myself with a virtual stranger's product of ejaculation in a hotel bedroom and then laying there like an upended taxidermy squirrel with my legs in the air for 30 minutes. Oh god, I hope you're not my boss and watching this. Um, <laughs> if you're my grandmother or my colleague, you might want to stop watching this um, more or less before you click the play button. Sorry about that, you may as well just keep going now because it's probably not going to get much worse than what I've already said. Um, so the indignities of it were um, rather off-putting, to say the least, not to mention the potential for problems down the line when it comes to the legalities of raising a child, custody, etc. Because these men don't officially terminate their parental rights. And... If you're not married or in a civil relationship with your partner at the time that the baby is conceived, if a child is conceived that way, they don't get automatic parental rights. And that was a huge concern for us. So after two months of going down the good old freeway, we decided that the cost of using a clinic was actually worthwhile for us. So we signed up with a fertility clinic and we began the process of IVF. The fertility clinic that we use doesn't actually have its own um, sperm bank. Some clinics do, but ours didn't. So they advised that we used one of the sperm banks in Europe. Um, there are two main sperm banks in Europe. One of them is called the European Sperm Bank and one of them is called um, Cryos. And there's a, a big one in the States called, I think, Zytec. So we looked at all three um, because we wanted to maximise our chances of finding the perfect sperm donor, if such a thing exists. So we signed up to all three and the way they work is it's kind of like, kind of like browsing a clothing store for a dress. You know you want a dress. You don't know whether you want an off-the-shoulder dress and you don't really know what colour you want the dress to be or maybe you do and there are other attributes that you kind of want in a dress. Anyway, it's kind of like that. It's all online. You can browse according to baby photos of the donors. Um, 
psychological profiles, IQ tests, family history, medical history, hobbies and interests. It is literally human shopping. So that was really weird. Um, so we, we signed up two or three of these clinics and we spent about a month, six weeks making a long list and then making a short list. And around that time, we realised that I tested negative for the CMV virus, which has a long name that I can't possibly try to pronounce right now. Um, but most people have had have contracted the CMV virus at some point in their lives by the time that they're 21 or so. I think it's something like 95% of the population have had it. And it only manifests with cold-like symptoms if you're a an out of the womb human, but it causes enormous problems if it's contracted um, when you're pregnant. It can do enormous, enormous damage to the fetus. So the HFEA, which is the authorizing body that regulates fertility treatment, has a blanket ban on women receiving sperm from CMV positive donors, um, donors who have had the CMV virus and carry the antibodies. It has a blanket ban against CMV positive donors giving sperm to CMV negative recipients, just in case the recipient contracts CMV and the fetus is harmed. And actually that scenario is just completely implausible, but they have a blanket ban and it's just not something you can get around by signing a disclaimer. Believe me, I tried. Anyway, so my top three choices at that point had tested positive for CMV. So I reluctantly said goodbye to the red-haired doctor who was going to father my children. Um, I say said goodbye, I didn't actually speak to him, but I just sighed and deleted him from the little notepad on my laptop where I listed their pseudonyms and rated them in order of preference. Um, so back to the drawing board, we whittled down all of the CMV negative potential donors and at that point we lost well about 90% of the population is positive for CMV so we lost 9 out of 10 potential sperm donors just by whittling down to those potential people um, and then we screened according to medical history we didn't want anyone who had a strong history of um, cancer, diabetes, um, any common prevalent issues. We didn't want anyone who'd suffered from allergies. We wanted somebody who was old enough to recognise what they were doing and to appreciate that they might have an 18 year old turning up on their doorstep in, in 20 years or so. So we then whittled out all of the donors who were younger than 25 or so because a lot of them were younger than that. A lot of donors in Europe are university students who do it as a way to earn a little bit more money to support their lifestyle through university. So we whittled those out and then we looked for somebody who had some academic qualifications, whose interests mirrored ours. And by that point, we were only down to a couple of potential donors but one of them really stood out to us. We liked the letter that he wrote to us as the parents of children conceived using his biological matter. And as a bonus, he had a super cute baby picture. If you picture my baby Ambler with Polly or Sasha's blue, blue grey eyes, that's what he looked like. So we chose him. And then we paid... I think it was £300 for a vial of unwashed sperm and £1,000 to register him as our donor with the HFEA and then another, I think it was something like £200 to have him shipped to our clinic. And what I haven't mentioned is that we did this so last minute because the CMV thing had just completely thrown me. And I was really attached to my red-haired donor, so I didn't really want to change who I was using. So we, we kind of, we put it off and put it off. 
And then I got this phone call from the clinic, which basically said, you're due to start your cycle in four days, you twit. And if you don't get donor sperm here within three days, we're going to have to cancel because we're not starting the cycle unless the sperm is actually sat in our, wherever they keep it, in our big sperm freezer. Uh, you might want to get on to ordering that. So actually, I ordered my donor sperm on my work computer during a lunch break and then sweet-talked our IT technician into deleting the evidence. I'm not working there anymore, so I can say that. And then um, a year later, we ordered more spam from the same clinic using the same guy and had that sent to our new clinic. So our two sets of twins are actually biological full siblings because they have the same sperm donor. So that's our story, and it's worked out brilliantly for us. And I kind of love that I can see traces of the chap who, who donated his sperm to help us create our family. And I, I love that I can see traces of him in our children. Um, and I kind of hope that one day they do request his details and they do get in touch. Um, because one of the rules for the HFEA, for, um, for buying donor sperm in the UK, is the donors have to be willing to be contacted by the offspring produced using their donor sperm when the children turn... I can't remember whether it's 16 or 18. I think it's 18, and the girls will be 16 because the boys will be requesting the information at 18, and they'll be 16. I think, I think 18. Anyway, I really hope that they do decide to contact him when they turn 18, but I really hope that um, he's receptive to meeting with us, because I would so love to tell him the impact that his donation had on our family. They would not be here if not for him. It just wouldn't exist. We might have children another way, but they wouldn't be Balthazar, Lysander, Embla and Olympia. And I think that is just enormous. So that's our story. I'd love to hear your story of how your children were conceived. Um, please like if you liked this video. Please go ahead and leave a comment. I do reply to all comments, even if it takes a while. And it's been really nice checking in with you guys. Thank you for watching.